Hello, my name's Sam with CodingWithSam.com. Today we'll look at using Xamarin Forms with F Sharp and just a simple building a simple little app to get started. If you don't have Visual Studio installed, you can do a quick Google search as you can see here, Visual Studio for Mac, and it's the first link. Follow the link, and here's the nice download button. It's very easy to install. I won't bore you with the details of going through the installation steps. So let's switch over to Visual Studio, <coughs> and here's the, de the default setup. I've only changed the theme to the dark theme because I think it looks a little bit better. That we'll look at today, or that I'll take you through, is a simple square root calculator app. I came up with this idea when I wanted to teach my wife some simple, a simple app to get started. So let's go over the new project, select app from the menu, and select blank forms app. Be sure to select F sharp from the drop down menu, and follow next. In this case we need to give it a name, so square root calculator. I'm always checking that I spell things correctly. Target platforms, we're going to go for Android and iOS because this is Xamarin Forms, it's cross-platform, it's native on both. I'm going to use a portable class library and for this demo we won't use the XAML interface files. We can look at it at another time. Leave me some feedback if you are interested in following with that. Go ahead and click next and all the defaults here are fine. We can use the same name. It's up to you if you want to use version control. I hit git for that. Hit create. Visual Studio will now create three projects for us. The first one is the portable class library. We can see that there. The second two is uh, the Android project and the iOS project. Let's have a brief look at each of those just while Visual Studio is downloading the required NuGet packages for each of these. We're going to expand these out. These should look like a standard iOS and Android project because they are native projects. Looking at the app delegate here, we can see that we have the main entry point to the app here. And we've also got the app delegate here. Several forms gets started up inside the finished launching override method. And on line 15, it launches the portable class library from our solution. Very straightforward, very simple. The same is also true for Android. So it just launches a main activity. It's got the required attributes, so main launcher there. Line 18, we can see that it starts up Xamarin Forms, the init function, and our portable class library is then initialized on line 20 there. Looks like everything's been added. We can now have a look at our portable class library that's been created for us here. So we can see there's some defaults already laid out. We'll remove that in, in, a, in a moment. For now, let's just make sure that everything's set up. I'm just going to go ahead and update my fsharp.core here. Sometimes that can give you a few errors that are Excellent. We don't not too concerned about that error. I'm just going to build all the project as well here. Normally I'll use the shortcut from now on, which is Command B. <coughs> Excellent. It looks like everything's building. So let's get started with our square root calculator. First step is to remove the things that we don't need. Now I'm going to create our first class for that. Main page is always a good thing. And most of our pages need to inherit from content page. There we go, our first F sharp class created in just a couple lines of code. Let's use that now and fill out main page and we can also create an instance of main page. So what I've done here is main page is an attribute or property of our application and we've just created a new instance of our main page and then assigned that to that. We don't need to use the new keyword in F sharp, it's redundant for most things. There are very few exceptions though. For our square root calculator app, we probably need a, a text box to enter something in, so let's create an entry. We'll use the let keyword to give it a name, and then we'll do the same thing as we did before, and we'll just use the entry class. We'll also give it a placeholder. There we go, and enter a number. So again, the same pattern here. We're creating the entry class here, and placeholder is an attribute of the entry class, which we can fill out with a string. Next up, we need a button. Follow the same pattern, just using a button. In this case, it has it needs a name, so text is the property for that, and we'll give that the name calculate. Of course, I need an assignment of the equals there. So that's all done. We now need to put that in something and put that on the UI. For that, we need a do block. This is very similar to a constructor if you're familiar with object-oriented programming. A stack is what we can use to put these in. So we'll create a stack layout. There we go. And we'll just center this in the UI. So vertical options equals layout options dot 
center and expand, there we go. And I'm just going to assign that to the UI. So we can use the base keyword. We need to assign that to content. And then we can just set stack here. So that's all done now. Now we need to put our items in the stack. So the stack has some children and there's a function here, add. And then we can just pass in our entry. For F sharp, we don't need to add the parentheses. It reads like English. If you're familiar with uh, C sharp, you would be used to putting parentheses around here. And we can also do the same with that button. So what we've got here is we've got a stack layout. And the first thing is that we've got an entry. And then below that, we've got a button. And this is going to be vertically centered in the screen. So we're all done with our UI components. We now just need to add the logic to this. So let's create a function for that. Calculate. Because this is going to be a button click handler, there'll be one parameter. But I don't need it for this example, so I'm just going to use underscore. I'm going to grab the entry.txt and we're going to convert that from a string into a float. So F sharp is statically typed. We can see here that it, the text, op, text property is actually a string and the float is a function that will convert some value into a string. The pipe operator allows us to write this so that we can read it from left to right. Next, we'll need to do the square root calculation. For that, I need to open the system and now I can do math.square root. There we go. We can convert it back to a string using the pipe operator. And finally, I need to assign it back to the entry. To do that, I'm going to have to go back to the left here, select our text, and then I'm going to have to enter the assignment operator for F sharp, which is this little arrow. I don't particularly like this construct. We'll clean that up in just a moment. Before that, let's not forget to add the click handler to our button. So we're going to select our button. We're going to select the event argument there, and we're going to add this in. And then we can just fill that in with our calculator. There we go. So everything's wired up now, but let's just clean up the code a little bit. So let's get rid of this. And I'm just going to create another function just to keep that looking clean and tidy. So update entry, we're going to take in one parameter here, s, and now we can just fill it out. So entry.txt and use the assignment operator here. We can now continue our readable style and just pipe that into that function. So what we've got now is entry.txt, take in the string, convert it to a float, apply the square root math computation on it, convert it back to a string, and then update our entry. All very readable. Let's see if I missed anything. Let's run it on iOS. I'll leave it as an exercise up to you if you're interested in running it on the Android project. Android emulators are a little bit slower. It's loading onto our iPhone. That's a good sign. It's launching. And we have our UI. I'm just going to hit 49, the calculate, number 7. Looks like everything's working. I'll leave it at that for now. There's obviously a bug in this. The application will crash under some conditions. I'll see if you can find that and I'll answer it in the next video and we'll also solve that problem with some functional techniques. Thank you for watching. This is Sam with codingwithsam.com.